Hi everybody, I'm David Rodriguez. Welcome to Leaning Left. I had an entirely different video planned uh, for this next one and uh, then everything, and I mean everything happened. Uh, it's been crazy. And, and usually in these videos, as you probably know, I try to stick to just one topic, but um, there's so much I'm gonna have to squeeze a few into this one uh, just because I don't know if I'm not gonna be able to put all these separate ones. So I'm not even gonna really touch too much on the um, Republican Klan rally going on in uh, Milwaukee. Uh, there's uh, not too much newsworthy coming out of that, except for, dear God, what happened to Matt Gates's face? Holy crap. I, I think, listen, I know there's these weird conspiracy theories about like aliens dressed up as real people, and, but I mean, God, if there's ever uh, an argument for that, it's gotta be whatever, whatever, whatever that is. I don't, I don't know. The only other thing I'll say about that is Hey, the Republican convention, they have Donald Trump, of course, the, the main candidate there, and Matt Gates, and yet they also want to call all Democrats pedos. Really? Like, have you, you know, you know, you know about those two, right? Yeah, they don't care. Anyway, let's get on to some of the, uh, the more pressing things going on. So first off, Judge Eileen Cannon dropped the federal uh, documents case against Trump. This was the case that everyone said was the easiest to prove. Like it was, it was pretty much a, a surefire bet he was going to be found guilty because we all saw the evidence and we all saw this. It was really, really clear. Like the, it's so cut and dry. It'd be like a murder thing where we all saw the murder happen on live TV. It was a surefire bet. Now, as you probably know, Eileen Cannon has been uh, delaying this in every way she possibly could. She's been pushing the date for the trial further and further away, and she finally decided to drop it based on some nonsense that Clarence Thomas said. And uh, uh, basically, she she said that uh, Jack Smith hadn't been appointed legally, even though um, he was appointed exactly the same way they would ever appoint anyone. But sure. So, uh, the good news here, and, and there is some good to this. Because first thing is that there is no way this trial is going to happen before the election. Anyway, like it just, she would have figured out a million ways to delay this between now and then. There's no way it was going to happen. Then if it did happen, uh, she's the one who decides the punishment if he's found guilty, which likely he would be. So um, she could just, you know, decide not to punish him at all if she wanted to or give him something extremely minimal to the point where it didn't matter. But now... Jack Smith has said he's going to appeal this, which means that they can get an entirely new judge. And hopefully, because both the uh, defense and the prosecutors have had time to look over all the evidence, they won't have this big delay to look over it again and they can get to the trial relatively quickly. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen before the, um, the election. Yeah, pro probably not, I'm guessing. But you know what? At least it's going to happen sooner rather than later, assuming that, of course, um, Trump doesn't become president. So, uh, granted, there's a lot of ifs in here, you know, if if the appeal, you know, wins out, and who knows. But I think that's there's more hope than there was before, honestly. Like, this, as, as crappy as it is as far as, like, what it means for our justice system, there's more hope that Trump can actually get in trouble for this than there was with her um, being the judge for the case. Next up, uh, Donald Trump finally chose a running mate. He chose J.D. Vance. Ooh, that, that's not J.D. Vance. Yeah, that's that's J.D. Vance. I, they look so similar, I couldn't tell. Very small face, very big head. It's, it's kind of strange, but anyway, his looks aren't really what matters. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of having a little fun with them. I, oh, psh, man, I'm weird looking too, so whatever. Um, that's fine. The fact is, I'm, I'm really glad he chose J.D. Vance. Not because he's a good uh, candidate, he's in fact awful, but that, that's why I like him uh, for Trump. See, my take is that if Trump had actually done something kind of shocking, like chosen Nikki Haley, for instance, as his running mate, I think he would have locked in his chance of victory. Like, I think he would have won for sure. Because uh, everything's so tight, so tight right now. If he could have gotten Nikki Haley as his VP, I, I don't know if he could have been stopped. I just, I don't know. I don't think so. But this guy, uh, he's really extreme. He thinks there would be a complete nationwide abortion ban, no exceptions whatsoever. And, you know, every place that abortion has been on the ballot, the um, the pro-choice uh, people have won. Every time. Because as it turns out, women don't like their rights taken away. I mean, no one does. So, yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, the other thing that he has said, 
he said that women should have to stay in abusive relationships for the sake of their kids. Good. There's so much wrong with that. I mean, first off, having uh, abusive, uh, you know, parents that are abusive towards each other in one way or the other, that's not good for kids. You're not helping the kids by keeping that together. You know, a single mom, even though that, I, I am not downplaying how hard that is at all. That's, I, I can't even imagine. I really can't. That's way better than having an abusive father there with the kids. Like, by, I, so much further, so much better. I, I almost can't, I don't know how to put it into words. It's, uh, it's insane. Also, I mean, the idea that they would have no escape then, no, no legal escape. I guess I could, like, try to run away and just leave and not be there, but they're still tied to this person. Uh, that's horrible. I mean, to me, that makes, if you were able to put that into place, that would make him complicit in every instance of abuse in America. Like, he's right there. He might as well be throwing the punches himself. That's J.D. Vance. Also worth noting, uh, J.D. Vance said that Donald Trump was uh, probably America's Hitler. And uh, he, many, I mean, he said nothing but bad things about uh, Donald Trump in the past. But like all the, you know, spineless spineless uh republicans he's uh you know kiss the ring now so and he's probably gonna do whatever trump says which is what trump's like likes about him but i don't think that jd vance is gonna win trump any votes you know it's not gonna make him lose any probably but he's not gonna win any so best case scenario unless trump wins then it's awful so finally uh someone made an attempt on donald trump's life at a recent rally. I'm sure you all know that by now. Um, he was shot at uh, either a bullet or a glass from the teleprompter that the bullet might have hit, sliced his ear. There's a lot of arguments over which one of those two things it is. And honestly, I don't, I don't know why that matters. I don't understand the point of art. Who cares? Because either way, whether it was the bullet itself or it's something the bullet hit that, that, that cut him, um, it's still an assassination attempt. It's still basically caused by the bullet. So I, I think that's a, it's just a silly thing to argue about. I, I don't, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that his injuries really minor. Like it's not that huge deal. Uh, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of the event, but um, you know, as far as injury to him, really minor, um, not too much of a problem there. And what was crazy is seeing the day after, because I guess he went golfing, is seeing uh, Republicans on X talk about like, oh, he's, he's so incredible. You know, he got shot one day and he's out golfing the next. I mean, look, he should take uh, a day or whatever he needs as a mental health day after that. I mean, I would want to for sure, you know, even though that's a minor injury, I've, I've bled more uh, shaving. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's fine. I don't have anything against doing that. That's fine. But they're acting like he's, it's some miraculous thing. Like, guys, he hurt his ear. Like, this, he doesn't, like, it's not like, even if it hit his hand, you have to use that all day. Like, your ear just sits there on your head. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's not going to cause him a lot of issues. It, it just isn't. Like, I, the situation's serious. The injury, very much not so. Like, can we stop pretending like he just, you know, went back in time, Storm Normandy came back, and now is rescuing kids from a burning orphanage? He's not. Like, he just went and played golf. The real sad thing is, is that it took him four days to call the widow of someone who actually died in that event. There was a, uh, a man who was a firefighter who jumped to shield his family from the fire and actually, uh, from, from the gunfire and actually was killed. Um, so he, uh, he, you know, I know a little bit about, like, his stance on things, and he and I do not agree on anything, but he died being a hero. And, and by the way, him disagreeing with me on everything does not mean that, that that should have ever happened to him. Ever. Like, that's... No. Like, not, none of this should have happened. But he died a hero. And everyone is fawning over, like, Trump and his mildly hurt ear. Like, I understand that the assassination, uh, you know, attempted assassination of a president or presidential candidate is very serious. Obviously it is. But, um... You know, as far as the public goes, like, we could be like, okay, like, he's good, that's great. What about this guy? Like, we should be talking about him some more. Like, I mean, come on. What What is more important here? I, I don't, I don't get it. So that man's name was Corey, um, I hope I'm saying this right, Comparatore. Uh, he is 50 years old. And, um, yeah, we're, where's all the talk about this guy? 
you know, uh, uh, agree with him on anything or not, he didn't deserve that. And he died doing what I would hope any of us would do for our family, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't care about his ear or how specifically he got hurt. Now, the thing that really bugs me about the situation, though, isn't, uh, I mean, besides just the, um, the event itself being a, a terrible thing, is the crazy conspiracies that immediately spring up. And sadly, I have to say that this came from both uh, Democrats and Republicans. Of course, Republicans, you know, some of them are saying like, oh, Biden arranged this and whatever. And this is actually like a, a liberal plot. Mm, okay. First off, the shooter uh, is a registered Republican. Now, admittedly, in the past, he has donated to Democratic causes. So I don't know where he stands. I guess the FBI has been looking through his phone and, and even still they're having trouble finding a real motive here. So... Uh, you know, he's 20. So, I mean, his, you know, his uh, beliefs can still be pretty much in flux. So, whatever the case, I, honestly, I don't think it matters. So, you, you have all that uh, very obvious stuff on the right. Some of them are, are saying that, like, oh, I bet the uh, Secret Service is in on this or part of it or the police were in on this. Or, oh, this is one of my, uh, I, I want to say favorite, but just because it's horrible. Um, there's so many people because some of the... So, uh, Secret Service agents were female, are saying that this is because of DEI. They, those women wouldn't have been hired. Some are saying, like, women shouldn't be in the Secret Service. Like, fuck off. I mean, <laughs> look, I'm sorry, but, like, that's insane. That's insane. I mean, you don't know what their procedures are. So let's not pretend that they were screwing up or anything like that. Or even if they were, it's not because they're women. It's because sometimes people are screw ups or they screw up a situation, men and women. All the time. All the time. So, cut that crap out. Now, on the left, you have some people saying that this was all staged by Donald Trump or by Republicans to help Donald Trump's chances of winning. <sighs> um, so, I wouldn't put that level of deception past Donald Trump because I think he will lie and scheme about anything. But I don't see him doing that. Uh, the reason being is that he is a bully. And bullies are cowards. They're cowards. There is no way he's going to say, oh, yeah, shoot really close to me. If you can clip an ear, you know, make sure you do that. No. I can't imagine that. And the fact of the matter is, is that all we know is that this is a 20-year-old shooter. Again, voter Republican, has donated to Democrat causes in the past. Hard to know exactly where he stands on things. He got his gun that was legally purchased by his father. It was an AR-15. Gosh, if only there was a political party trying to stop those from being available to the public. Maybe this all could have been avoided. Anyway, uh, he got on the roof. He took a shot. Um, luckily, Donald Trump wasn't killed. He was minorly hurt. And unfortunately, someone in the audience was, who we should be talking about a lot more. And... Um, that's basically what we know. So I'm not saying that it's impossible that there's more at play here. I guess there could be. But until we know there is, we got to stop slinging around these ridiculous ideas. Like, especially on the left. You know, leave the kooky conspiracy theories to the right, where they already were anyway, because it's hard to take them seriously. Don't do this. Don't do this on the left. Don't, don't join in on that. Don't try to match them with these crazy ideas. If we find out that any of those are right, any of them, okay, like we need to talk about that. But until then, what we know is what we know and everything else, everything else is just speculation. My personal guess, and it is a guess, it's a guess, that this guy is like so many of these mass shooters are and he wanted to feel more important. You know, like that's what he wanted. He had some kind of grievance probably, but he wanted to make his mark in some way. And a lot of these types of people who off a bunch of people, that's what they want. They want to feel important. They want to be in the public eye. They want to be talked about. Other than that, I don't know, maybe he hoped this would like uh, spur some kind of like revolution or something. I'm not sure. These again, purely guesses, a hundred percent guesses. I have no idea. Maybe he thought Donald Trump was a fly and he needed to take it out. I don't know. And nobody else knows. So let's just stick to what we do now. Let's just stop pushing weird conspiracy theories. It doesn't really help anything. And it kind of makes us look silly, in my opinion. Again, leave that to the right where it's been for years. That's my take on it. But do let me know in the comments what you think about 
uh, any of these things. Um, I definitely want to hear about it. I'll get back to the episode. I was going to do another time. I was going to talk about how um, the infighting amongst uh, the uh, you know liberals among us has to stop. Oh, we're creating problems for ourselves. But I'll get to that uh, another time. I don't want to start ranting because I'll just go off on it, which is not what I'm trying to do. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you can know about the next time I put out a video. But in the meantime, stay woke, stay vigilant, keep fighting, and remember, if you keep leaning left, you'll always be right. <laughs>